Hello, my darlings. It's Zoe here, and today I've wrote a Dabby X Reader fanfiction for you. I hope you like it. Uh, but before we dive right into the insanity, uh, please remember to like and or dislike the video, comment something down below, and please watch the video until the end. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, in the description down below, you will find links to both my Patreon and my merch store. I would greatly, greatly appreciate some uh, monetary donations. Anyways, I really hope you enjoy the story. Now, let's read. It was a beautiful day outside. The flowers were blooming. The birds were singing. On days like these, you enjoyed nothing more than to sit on your balcony, eating your favorite food, while listening to your favorite songs. At least, this is what you would have been doing, if it weren't for a very recent breakup with your fiancé. So instead, you were sprawled on your sofa, huddled under a blanket, despite the warm temperature outside and inside, and shoving ungodly amounts of ice cream into your gut, while watching cheesy action movies from the 90s. That was until you heard a soft knock on your door. You couldn't help but let go of a disappointed sigh, since the main character of the movie was about to run into a nest of giant alien bugs with a nuke. Slowly you stood up and slumped over to the door. When you heard a second knock, you answered with a loud, I'm coming, I'm coming! <laughs> Don't remember giving you permission to come. <laughs> that voice. That familiar, stoic voice. You slowed down and clenched your fists when you arrived at the door. What do you want, Darby? Of course, it had to be the guy you had just broken up with. Let me in. Just... Just wanna talk. You didn't answer. Look, I could burn down this door, but I won't because I respect you. You repressed a chuckle. Please, I... I just want to talk. I swear. That was sincerity in his voice, which made your eyes watery. It was rare he showed emotions. He wasn't the guy to talk. With a sniffle, you turned around and pressed your back against the door and slid down. Judging by the shuffling noises behind you, he was doing the same. You two had met for the first time four months ago. He had bumped into you while grocery shopping. He was really grumpy that day, and his cart was filled with random assortments of food. He had apologized and went on his way. Giving him no further thoughts, you kept shopping until you ran into him again, at the aisle with sweets. He chuckled when he saw you approach. <laughs> you following me? Despite the chuckle, his voice was weary, as if you were about to jump him. You shook your head and simply said, No, 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 I... <laughs> I just want some yogurt gummy bears followed by an innocent laugh. A slight blush had come over him before he retorted with a soft smile. <laughs> when we meet for a third time today, ask you out on a date. He left with a smile before you could reply, leaving you a blushing mess. And you silently hoped that the third time would happen. And it did. 
A few hours later, when you were buying a special brand of soda that was only sold in this one store a town over. You were so focused on grabbing the bottle, you didn't first notice that a patchworked hand was also reaching out. The moment your fingers touched, and you looked at him, and saw his surprised smile, you had fallen in love. The date went perfect, too. He had invited you to play mini-golf. Mini-golf as a first date. Even now saying it felt so... innocent? However, it was only a few months into your relationship you learned why. Darby was a villain. And the mini-golf place was in a very, very secluded area of the city. You were devastated when he finally had told you. At first you were okay with it, until you asked the only question that was important to you about this. Have you ever killed someone? You knew before you finished the sentence he wouldn't answer that. So you had left him and went home. And now three days later this was happening. Do you still want to know how many? You heard him ask. After you didn't answer, he replied with at, at least three. Your sobbing became louder and you buried your hands in your face. Dobby scratched his head. He knew at this point the only thing that could in some way mend the situation was to tell you the truth. If you two got back together over a lie, you would eventually find out. So... Are you a hitman? You croaked. No, no, I, I think, hard to say, the guys I'm running with are sort of chaotic, so I don't really know. You raised an eyebrow. The people you're running with? So you're like a group? He chuckled. There's this boss of some sorts. Funny guy. Really annoying quirk, though. Uh, a girl named Toga. She is creepy, to say the least. Then there's Mr. Compress. Honestly, I think you'd like him. He's sort of a showman and magician. Uh, then there is Spinner, some weirdo who likes to collect knives. He went silent for a moment. Then there's this other guy. Calls himself twice. Weirdo, if you ask me. But they all sort of became my surrogate family. I could never get along with my dad, you know. He had shared family stories before, some of which now made more sense. Oh, almost forgot. There's Korogiri. <laughs> the guy makes a mean sex on the beach. You tilted your head to look at the door. You loved this man. You really did. But you were unsure if you should let him in. Is there no way of us getting back together? You shook your head, but your mouth betrayed you. I love you. You knew him well enough that now a grin was spread across his face. <laughs> love you too. Your heart stopped for a beat. He said it before a few times, but... 
It always sounded so... emotionless. I... he began. I haven't realized how much I love you until you were gone. I hear your voice in my dreams. See your face in flowers and clouds. Uh, and I have developed a taste for these gross yogurt gummy bears of yours. I need you. Please. Please come back to me. You heard him sniffle. He was crying. Darby was crying right behind your door, begging you to re-enter his life. If I open this door, he began, what will you do? Will you take me to your hideout? Force me to live the life you have chosen for yourself? Will you come in, hug me, tell me a few nice things and then go off to your second family and get shot by the police a few days later? He gave a dry laugh that was more cough than anything. I was thinking you open the door, we hug, and or talk it out more and come up with something we both will be okay with. Do you regret killing these people? He was quiet for a second. I was looking for more people to recruit for our little group. Caught a bunch of lowlifes in an alley. Gotta admit, didn't know what I was thinking at the time. They charged me. If anything, it was self-defense. Anyone else? No. Not yet. You raised your right hand and started chewing on your fingers. You were never so torn in your entire life. Very slowly you got on your feet and faced the door. Hand coming closer and closer to the doorknob. And then Something happened inside of you. Something cracked. A realization. Two options. Like in a bad video game. The path of a bad guy with Darby. Or the path of a normal, boring life without him. You chuckled. Babe? You heard him shift. Your hand now hovered over the doorknob and you could feel the cold of its metal radiating onto your skin. Your chuckle turned into manic laughter. Are you laughing at me? You heard him bark from behind the door. Tears began rolling down your face. You grabbed the knob and twisted it. Opening the door, light flooded into your room. You were still laughing and crying. It's so absurd, you spewed out. It's so absurd. Over and over, screaming these words. And then you felt him wrap his arms around you. It's gonna be okay. He whispered into your ear. Please don't leave me. You shouted into his chest. I won't, was his only reply. <laughs>